All right, so I'm Jeremy Mack. I work up at uh, Sparkbox in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, we're like a web development shop. And I also do a bunch of Ember stuff in my free time. About a year ago, I started learning Ember back in beta days for a government project that I was working on and scared the crap out of them by writing CoffeeScript and not doing uh, Java objects and all sorts of things that they wanted me to do. Glassfish and all sorts of the other terrible things that Java people name their projects. Um, so yeah, I started learning Ember back then. It was really awesome. And then I started using Ember data and kind of found out that it wasn't so awesome. Not everything that Ember was associated with Ember was awesome, but it's gotten better since then. Um, I built a whole bunch of Ember apps in the last year, probably like 20 or 30 of them, small ones, big ones. It's my go-to for any project I start. Like if I'm like, I really wish there was a thing to do this little tiny thing I need, and three hours later I've got a functional thing that runs on every OS that you can think of because it's a web app. It's easily the best place to go if you want to make something that's a GUI app that you know responds, works, and just get up and running really quickly. The one thing that kind of sucks though is the tooling around the build process. Um, there's so many choices right now for how you can compile your assets. You could use all of Rails to compile your tiny Ember app, which feels a little bit heavy duty. There's tons of extensions on top of the asset pipeline that let you do different things, but then you're still running Ruby code in your JavaScript app that might not need any Ruby code. Um, so there's one great choice, which is Brunch, and Brunch is a asset compilation tool. And it does a lot of things for you, and it's got a lot of conventions out of the box, so you don't have to do too much configuration to get it going. Um, the nice thing they also have is a skeleton feature. And it's a feature where you somebody can make a skeleton of what they typically lay out their app as, and then put it on GitHub, and you can start from that skeleton. There's people who've made the same kind of thing for Rails and all sorts of other stuff. And so about a week ago, I was like, I need to release this skeleton that I've been using because I've got all these conventions and ways of doing things that might be useful to more people than just me. And so, uh, find my mouse cursor here. So I set up an Ember skeleton and there's a lot of uh, funny names for these skeletons. Brunch with hipsters, brunch with banana pancakes. Um, I went with tapas with Ember because it's like another fancy meal that isn't real. Um, so. This is the project here, and what it does is you just basically type in these, this one command after you install brunch with npm, which if you installed node, which you need homebrew, which you need a Mac, so I guess there's like seven commands, but, and the first one being go to an Apple store. Um, but yeah, you install brunch, and then you've got this command brunch, and you run brunch new and point it at my project, and it doesn't run any arbitrary shell code or anything. And, uh, then you go into that folder and you type in server and you've got a Ember app running. And what do you get from that? Uh, you get a whole bunch of cool little technologies that are already set up for you, like um, CoffeeScript and Stylus for style sheets um, and some other small things that are just really annoying to get set up yourself. Some of the very specific to me things are I'm a Vim user through and through, and so I hacked in rails.vim support, which sounds weird because it's not Rails, and I just talked about how it would suck to have to use all of Rails. Rails.vim is this amazing Vim plugin for, for uh, Rails that lets you navigate through the complex structure of data models and controllers and everything that your Rails app has. Uh, Tim Pope, the guy who made it, also made this little feature for it that lets you define custom locations for files and file extensions, and you can hack it to support any kind of project. And so I've hacked it so that you can use the same navigation commands. So you can say our model, and it will jump you straight to whatever models you've got, and you get a list of them. It's a really elegant way to navigate around a project. It even lets you do like scaffolding, so you can actually put an exclamation mark at the end of a model name, and it will create that file with a scaffolding inside for how you might start off with a model. Um, that's a super useful feature that I use all the time. Uh, install scripts, so Ember and Ember Data and Ember Model are always getting new releases. And thankfully, because of that build page, they're all up on the web in a standardized URL. So I made a little tiny script that goes in and grabs those and puts them in the right place. And so you can just run like cake uh, Ember install, and it'll just go out and grab the production and development versions of Ember. And so there's actually two versions of every release of Ember. There's a development version and a production version. The development version still has like assertions and log statements and debug statements in there. 
uh, the production versions, like the lean and mean version that you want to ship with, well, there's only like one build tool out there that actually takes care of switching between those two when you want to compile your app for production, and that's the Ember Rails plugin. So if you want to have that, you've got to use all of Rails. Um, I kind of hacked it up, and it works really great now. So you can actually build your app, and it will use the correct version of Ember when you're building it. So you can work against dev, and you can see all the you know, assertions and deprecation warnings and all that great stuff. And then when it comes time to ship it, you just do cake build, and it will build a version of the app against the production version of Ember. And that's like super useful. And you can then use that in your build process to do like continuous deployment or something. And yeah, so I find that very incredibly useful. And also, I don't know why this doesn't really exist in, in standardized form, but no one seems to define environment variables in their JavaScript apps. So it does that too. You get an environment thing that you can require from anywhere and find out what environment you're in. So you could like put some debug statements or log statements that only show up in you know debug mode or in development or staging or whatever you want to do. So that's. So is it similar to Grunt then? Or? It is, yeah. So Grunt is like, it's like back, like comparing Backbone to it in a way. It's like it's a small tool that you can plug in a whole bunch of things and do great stuff with. Brunch is got all those things pre-built in that's specifically targeted at building apps. So it's like a bunch of Grunt plugins together. And I think they even use some maybe abstracted Grunt modules or whatever, some of their things. But it also takes care of installing dependencies with like Bower and stuff like that. But I'm not using Bower for anything because the Ember guys aren't really using Bower that much. And depending on some GitHub repo to get. Yeah, oh, really? They are? Uh, for me. That's good. Then that's that's great to hear because, yeah, I, for me, I hate the idea of having to wait for somebody to go update some GitHub repo somewhere with the new version of the asset that got released two days ago. So that's why they built those cake file scripts so that it go fetch it goes and fetches them from the auto built S3 bucket that they have for Ember. And yeah, once Bower is really f at you know its full awesomeness, then I'm sure I'll change over to it for everything. Uh, this works on Windows machines. <coughs> um, what's a Windows machine? No, uh, no yeah. It, I know Brunch does. Yeah. Well, honestly, it's easier to get Node set up on a Windows machine than it is to get Rails or Ruby set up. So I'm sure Brunch works on Windows. Um, I don't know if all the specific things I'm doing work on Windows. I don't think there'd be any reason why not, because Cake files are built into CoffeeScript. So if you've got CoffeeScript running, so if Brunch works, this should probably work. The live reloading stuff might. I don't know what part of it. So anyway. Brunch has built into it a live reload feature so that it will update your CSS or your JavaScript changes automatically to the browser. And it turns that off when you're in production, of course. But it, it's a built-in feature of the asset compilation tool, so you don't have to use some third-party thing if you don't want to. Um, and then one last thing I'll mention here is generators. Uh, these mirror the Rails Vim commands I was talking about for generating new models and mix-ins. And the cool thing is there's just this simple little tiny library called Scaffold, which is kind of what the Node community is famous for, is making these little libraries. And it takes a JSON declaration and the handlebars you know, file and makes you know, all the, whatever scaffolding you could possibly want. And it's way easier to do than the generators in Rails. And so if you go into this generators folder, you'll see all those different scaffolding files. So if your project specifically, you're using like some crazy model convention, you can just open this up because it's in your project, and you can edit the handlebars file for what a model looks like when it's first created. And that's all it takes to make your own custom scaffoldings, which I think is a pretty great feature to have, too. And that just declares how it looks on the command line. So yeah, it's a really quick way to get up and running with Ember. And I can, oh yeah, and there's the Vim commands. Um, if you're in Vim, you can use basically the same commands that you use in Rails.Vim, and it goes to the different directories. And then I've added some special ones like template, because there's templates in Ember and all that kind of stuff. So I can do a live install real fast here, and we'll see how it works. So all the way at the top um, is me doing that one command at the very beginning of that readme to make a new project called Ember Natty. And it's going to go fetch using Brunch's stuff, my skeleton from GitHub, check it out, and now install packages. And that's installing all the NPM packages that Brunch uses to build all the assets, to do all the compilation of CoffeeScript to JavaScript, Stylus to CSS, all that stuff. So now that's all ready to go. So I CD into Ember Natty, and then I do cake server, and it should be up and running. And so it says that it compiled 14 files, and it's serving it on localhost 333. 
So I hit enter, and there's my app up and running. And I'll go back to the browser, or back to the terminal here, and let's open up another window, and then I will edit the app and show you how it live reloads when you do this. And so I believe it's in the route. Yeah, the index route is where they declare this. So if I want to add another color to this, like a test color, it's going to say that it found it and compiled just what it needed. It's super fast compared to the asset pipeline. I should have mentioned that earlier. And you'll see that it's already been reflected live in the browser. And if I open up the console, you'll see that all the debugging information is conditionally turned on when you're running in development mode. You get all these Ember debug log messages and then all of this wonderful state transition stuff from the router. And if I were to go back and run the server in production, all of those messages would disappear. So I could do um, cake dash P uh, dash capital P, I hope so. Server, it'll tell me it's running. Production, yay, hey, it worked. And then if I go back to the browser and refresh, you are running a build of production on localhost. That's the message you get when you run a production build of Ember on your local box. But you'll see all the debug messages are gone, everything's set up, and you've still got your running app against the you know good stuff there. And if I wanted to install um, the rec most recent version of Ember, it's a simple command. Also, as a note, Cake is really fast as compared to running Rake in Rails, which takes a decade. So if you want to figure out what the commands are, you don't have to be scared to type it with no arguments. You'll actually get them immediately. And you can do Cake Ember install. And you can actually specify the different builds like they sh uh, like uh, we looked at before. Oh, I mistyped that. Uh, like canary beta and release, but it defaults to release. And so it's going to go grab those, throw them in the right folders, and then it'll be up to date with the latest versions. So that's my workflow for building apps. I'm going to keep updating this. You can send pull requests if you want, but if it's not the way I work, then I'm not going to merge it because it's kind of particular to me. So if you like the skeleton and you want to keep banking tons and tons of Ember apps in like two hours that do awesome things, then you should probably fork it and add your own features if you want them. But that's it. What is Cake written? Cake is CoffeeScript. So yeah, at the top of this, I probably should have mentioned that I use CoffeeScript for everything just because I can't not have the syntactic sugar of like the existential operator to check existence and stuff, and you know, suffix uh, conditionals. So Cake files are built into CoffeeScript, and it's just a very simple declaration of a file that has tasks to run. So yeah, it's an easy way to get that, rather than using grunt. So like using your uh, Rails Vim plugin there, so this is just like the same commands like R model, yeah. that kind of stuff. I can show you like what one looks well, like. I'm thinking I would love to have like an E model in my Rails app, you know, mm -hmm. and then hit my Ember models. Yes, you can do that, and that's where I originally came up with the idea. You can define all these projections. Actually, I'll show you what they look like. First of all, let's go away from the index route, and I'll show you how I, you can navigate to it. Maybe so, bump. Uh, let's see if I can do that in iTerm. Oh, please don't hurt me, in iTerm. Um, and then maybe I'll just do this. <laughs> All right. So if I type in our model and then I hit tab, oh no, there are no models in this app. If I hit route, I've only got index as my only choice because that's my only route up there is the index route. You notice there's no underscore. Hit enter. I've transitioned to that route immediately and it's very quick. If I were to want to make a model, I could do um, like a test model and I put a bang at the end. It's going to generate a Ruby model because there's a bug with uh, projections. <laughs> we'll just not look at that one. But if I were to do a controller that called a test controller, it's going to generate a correct controller for Ember. And it's not saved yet though, so I could just write that file and then show it over there. And then I can jump back to my uh, index route. And then now I really want to go back to my controller, so I can just tab, and now I'm back to the controller I just made. So the way those look when you declare them is they're in this projections.json file, and that's the way a projection looks, a declaration. And there's actually way more commands you can provide to it beyond just template and command. You can also give it alternate files and bunches of other cool stuff. Percent %s, wherever you see that, is replaced with the lowercase version of the um, thing that you looked for and the percent capital S is the camel case version and so on so that it's more for Rails but since Ember has Rails kind of conventions it synchronizes nicely. But yeah you could totally change these declarations 
So like, where's my model one? There it is. So I could do like J model for JavaScript or E model for Ember, and then I can just quit out of this, open this up again, and then now E model is an option, and I don't have any models. And if I tried to make one, it would make a Ruby model, but I do have an open issue on GitHub for Tim to fix that. So, yeah. Uh, for Rails Vim, you can put it in three locations. I believe one of them is the gem file, like for a gem, because a gem can define some projections. But the other two locations are in your actual VimRC or in config slash projections.json. And so that's the key place to put it. Actually, if I try to tree this, it's, oh, no, that's a bad idea because of NPM. Um, so if I go over here and, yeah, this is the structure for Tapas with Ember. And there's the projections JSON. And there's this nice environment RB file there, which causes Rails Vim to become active. You need that, or else it doesn't work. But that's just a idiosyncrasy of the fact that this is not meant for being used with uh, Ember. But yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so it's got Karma, and I forked this from somebody else's uh, brunch template, and I kept Karma in there, but I'm not testing anything with it right now. I know that it works probably for unit tests and stuff like that. When I get to the point where I'm actually doing testing on the small apps I've been building with this tool, I'll probably have to make a couple commits to fix something that I broke, but I, it's, it probably functions is what I would guess. If not, I do put in the footer where I got this template from, and the one thing that's definitely the same from where I got it is the uh, testing stuff. But yeah, it's with the Karma test runner, which if you don't know is one that's used with Angular heavily, and it lets you run tests across all different environments, like in all of your browsers on your system from your JavaScript land, so you can see them all turn green or red in Internet Explorer. Well, actually, probably don't have an Internet Explorer runner. It used runner. to be testacular. Yeah. Yep, used to be testicle tacular or testacular. Yeah, that was what it was. All right, so yeah. And it does work in Angular. Oh yeah, because they use a JavaScript thing. Yep. Any other questions? All right, and this is up on GitHub. Uh, you can find it at my name, Mute Winter, on GitHub slash Tapas with Ember, and I've also linked it from the homepage of Brunch in their skeleton section. And there's a ton more skeletons there. If, if CoffeeScript isn't your flavor, or if you don't like Stylus for doing style sheets, then there's a bunch of other people out there that you can pull from to get the little plugin that you need to change it to how you want to work. So that's it.